My name is Michael. Welcome back to the Mods YouTube channel. Today we're going to learn about sound in our sound show. Hi everybody. My name is Brady and we're going to be talking about how sound works here, right? Or really how music works and what music is composed of, right? We think of music as being sound. But what's sound? Sound is a series of vibrations and those vibrations are within a specific range that can be detected by uh, some of our senses, right? Sometimes you can feel sound, sometimes you can hear sound, sometimes there's sounds that you can't even really hear, right? There's vibrations going through all different mediums, and there's three little bones in our ears covered in these microscopic little hairs that pick up those vibrations and translate them into electric signals that go into our brains that recognize it as the sounds we know today. And that sound could be music, a song, a car driving past, uh, the drop of a needle, or the roar of a jet engine. And when we hear these sounds, uh, our brain does something. Uh, there's a series of sounds that could be dissonant, which means it's very unsettling to our senses, and sounds that are harmonic, which means they are very soothing. And that can be used in a lot of different ways that we'll touch on in just a minute. But first, let's talk about how those, freaking, how those vibrations work, right? Those vibrations come through in what we call waves. Now, sound waves are basically these vibrations that go back and forth, and back and forth. And so there are different lengths to those waves, which we call wavelengths. And how fast those wavelengths go back and forth is what we call frequencies, right? And the waves keep reflecting back and forth. And as they go in a medium pace, you'll hear kind of a medium tone. But the faster they go, the higher the frequency. And the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. The lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. So at least the math makes it easy to remember. Now, just to visualize kind of waves going back and forth, I want you to try an exercise at home to see how this goes, right? Now, when we have low frequencies, those waves are stretched out further and further apart, right, giving us longer wavelengths. And as they get higher and higher and higher, you can fit more waves into a smaller space, and they vibrate a lot faster, right? And the faster they go, the more you can hear it a little clearly, but the lower, the more you can feel it, right? So I want you to try an exercise at home. Take a couple of fingers and put it against your throat and make a range of noises going from low frequencies all the way up to high frequencies, and then back again. And let me know if it sounds a little different. Then try it with maybe a little range of sounds. Maybe try this. Repeat after me. Very good. So how did those sounds make your hand feel different as your throat was vibrating? Those lower sounds, you could feel a lot more, right? Uh, that's why we call them lower frequencies. They kind of come through the ground almost. You almost have to feel them more than you hear them. Now, sound can travel through a lot of different mediums, right? Now, think about what we were just talking about as far as how you can feel things versus how you can hear things. Uh, through those different states of matter that we might have talked about in some of our other videos, solids, liquids, and gases, the tighter the molecules pack in together, the more solid, right? Gas molecules like the air are spread far apart. Liquid molecules are bonded together but still have some room to move around, and solid are packed in tighter together. Now, the more packed in the molecules are, the faster and the stronger the sound waves are going to travel through. So if you put your ear to the table and listen, it might sound different than if you're listening to a lower sound to the table uh, trying to go through the air. Try closing one ear at a time and then both ears and then no ears as you're talking or even as you're listening to me to see how that might sound as your voice has different channels to go through. Sounds weird, right? And that's kind of also how, if you've ever been at the beach and you put your ears under the water, you can hear ships that are way far away on the horizon, but you can't hear them above the water through the air, because that sound is going to be traveling through the water a lot faster. Now, 
that's just us. That's just us humans. Different animals have different ranges of hearing. We might be, there might be sounds that are so high pitched in such high frequencies that we can't hear them, but other animals like dogs, dolphins, and whales, and bats can hear them very clearly. Think about if you know of a dog whistle or something, if you've ever seen that in action, if you have dogs at home or if you've been to the dog park and someone might blow a whistle, but you can't hear it, but all the dogs come running. Because dogs have a much wider range of what they can hear. Those are just frequencies that are way up high that only dogs can hear, but it's not going to bother the humans. Now, as those frequencies, as those waves go back and forth, now that we kind of know how that's going to work, we can manipulate that to make certain things happen. Take these two bongo drums. The one with the bigger frame has a lot more space for the waves to reflect back and forth. So it's going to make a pretty deep sound compared to the one where it's smaller and the waves have a shorter uh, distance to travel and it's going to reflect back at a higher frequency. And so knowing that, the way that you engineer something, specifically percussion instruments, is going to make a difference in what tones you're hearing. And depending on what materials you're hearing, you might hear a different tone. Like that was made out of a canvas and wood, and so you heard uh, the sound of that reflecting. This little mini, very, very short scale glockenspiel is going to give us a lot different tone because it's made out of metal. And the metal is engineered at very specific lengths to give us different uh, very specific frequencies that we're going to recognize as musical notes. So even though we are playing a percussion instrument, the way that it's engineered allows us the ability to play what we call a melody. And that's kind of the tune you hear in most music. Right? Now, beyond percussion instruments, obviously we have stringed instruments like the violin or the guitar, where the vibration is happening by the reflection of a string uh, being held at different tensions. There are also woodwind or brass instruments where wind is pumping through certain channels and giving us different tones, like this recorder. Now, as I put my finger on over all the different holes, it's going to block off sound from different ways, and those waves, those sound waves, are going to travel through different areas. And depending on which areas they're traveling through, uh, it's going to give us different sounds. And if I actually knew how to play this instrument, it would sound really good. Other things can be used in the same manner, not just for music, but for like sound effects or something. Same concept can be applied to this, what we call a slide whistle, which has a metal beam in it that can be pulled back and forth to, again, manipulate how much room there is for the air, for those vibrations to be moving around. As I pull it out, the sound gets deeper because it's giving it more air, more room for those sound waves to go back and forth. Very good. Okay. Now let's kind of take this into a more lab type setting. And I'm going to use our tone generator to give us uh, a different idea of a more visual representation of where these vibrations can hit and how they can travel through different mediums to get to a specific area. So I'm going to put some sand on what is called a colobny plate. which is named after a scientist named Nicholas Klodny, who first developed this experiment. I'm going to cover this with sand. I have to keep reapplying the sand. Hopefully you can see this from where you're at. And I'm going to use our tone generator to get us to very, very specific frequencies. And as these frequencies uh, are dialed in, sometimes you won't see the sand doing anything, but sometimes they'll emerge in different patterns because those frequencies are traveling through and spacing out in very specific ways. So I'm going to start with something very, very low, which is going to vibrate the table a lot. And you're going to see it's almost like an earthquake happening. But the sand's not really doing much. So I'm just going to change the frequencies here a little bit, and we're going to see what's going to happen to our sand as we hit different patterns. So here at a kind of mid-frequency, we can see this kind of striped kind of square, very symmetrical, bizarre patterns taking shape. 
and that's because the vibration is all hitting in the middle here. Uh, we're at about 70 hertz, which is a pretty low range. And the vibrations are hitting in the middle here, so that's why you can see the sand jumping around and it's pushing everything out to the outside. But it's also giving me this weird border that's going into this kind of, looks like a four-way street taking shape. And now I'm getting more of an oval as the frequency is kind of spreading out a little bit. But the magnitude of that frequency gets so intense at certain levels, I have to kind of play with my volume a little bit here too. So I'm going to put some more sand up here. We're going to see it dancing around. And as I go to higher and higher frequencies, uh, some really interesting stuff is going to take place with our patterns here. So now nothing's really happening. But at just very specific pockets, the waves are going to travel through this metal plate and give us kind of some very symmetrical works of geometric art here. So now we can see this kind of butterfly pattern taking shape and we're at about 240 hertz, which is uh, kind of like in the same range as uh, like a tenor voice happening or like a trumpet or saxophone or something like that. And we're getting this very clear pattern here just based on where that's hitting. There's no sand going to these areas because the vibrations are so intense in those spots that it's pushing it to where there's none. And so this kind of technology can help us uh, not only just make sound effects and music, but is also being developed in medical technologies for things like uh, mental therapy. It's being used to treat things like Alzheimer's and very sensory-based conditions uh, to bring people into a more uh, sensory-based understanding of communication. And that's kind of how sound works and how music can be useful uh, to us in a multitude of our society. So that's about all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and the rest of our videos, and we'll see you again soon. We want to thank the Rosemary Duffy Larson Trust for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you subscribe below.